uh, the first verse today. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to read the first verse again, just in case anybody wasn't here last week, and just refresh our minds. Um, so the first verse in Proverbs 18.1 says, A man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. So I talked about how um, <clears throat> it's how important it is to kind of um, just get rid of all the distractions in our life. I feel like this is wicked loud. And just to get into that secret place with the Lord. Um, so I really don't want to go back to last week. I'll be starting off with the same thing next week. So, <clears throat> But what I was going to finish off with uh, in the first was I have this... Um, I got this like top ten list of things that distract Christians or just pe- just Christians, from God, and I didn't want to just fly through it in the last five minutes last week, so I'll go through that real quick. And I think it's important. I mean, it's funny, but it just um, we'll just go through it. So uh, <clears throat> I guess we'll just there's not in any particular order either. Um, first one is money. Uh-huh. Obviously, we all yeah. um, <clears throat> we need to live in the world, but we shouldn't be owned by it. Um, I mean, Tim, we're talking about the other night about how it's not bad to have nice things, but like, what are you doing to get those nice things? Are you yeah. working 200 hours? You have a credit card, you? right? You have credit card bills coming out of your ears. I mean, it's it. You know, it's not like I said. It's not bad to have nice things, but how are you getting those nice things? All right, like consume consume our our, our world. Um, the second thing was media, and we kind of touched on that last week. Um, Facebook. I mean, another big thing for myself, media. What's this? The big, you know, it's Sunday. It's football. You know, like what are you thinking about when you're in church? You know, I hope we get out at one o'clock because the Pats, the Pats game is at one fifteen, or you know, that's. No, 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 because they're on at eight o'clock tonight, so we have plenty of time today. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You can service everyone. Be quiet. Right, right. Watch. If we have, like, you know, there's been some times where pastor, we've had, like, a service on a Sunday night, and, it, and there's, like, a football game on, and I, you know, myself, but I've also heard my friends, some people grumble about, it. what are we going to do? The, the game is on. It's like, why are you even asking yourself, what are you going to do? You know what you're going to do. It's just a game. There tomorrow, you know, it's going to be over in three hours. Um, another thing is church and religion. I mean, it's easy to pursue church and, and the beliefs about God, but forget to pursue God himself because we get caught up in that stuff. You know, I mean, like the, the dance team is great. All these little outside of, outside of church or outside of service is great. But if that's the only reason why you're coming here, then there's no point in coming. Um, man, you guys are quiet again. All right, <laughs> let's see. I got next one is relationships. Um, so, relationship should be more important than the one that you have with the Lord, yeah. right? That's even if you're married. I mean, the Lord should be. Number- I mean, look at how, how crazy the divorce rate is out there, and that's even with people that go to church. That's not just people that are believers too. You know, He is our glue. He's our bond. Amen. You know. Um. And that even goes for people that are dating, you know? If you're dating, and I, I, I learned firsthand when I first met Savani, there, there was no compromise, and that's one thing. You know, no, so, yeah. you know? I actually respected her for, for that more, you know, more, you know? Exactly, exactly. And that's just, I guess, a warning for people that are unmarried in here that are dating or, or whatever the heck you're going to be doing is don't compromise. I mean... I was actually even thinking about that. Compromise. That's the reason why, um, that's like the biggest reason why the world is in the situation we're in right now. Compromise, you know? And what actually kind of makes me mad, I don't want to go off on a tantrum, but like, because I was, I was born Catholic, so, you know, my parents, parents are, are big on the Pope and stuff. So why is it when somebody in the media asks the Pope a question, he can't just go to the well, this is the reason why we believe what we what believe instead of compromising and say, oh, yeah, well, we have room for, you know, to let certain people into our church now. You know, like, why? I don't get it. It makes no sense. 
Compromise. You're letting the evil spirit into, into your house. You know? All right. Um, another thing is your routine, your daily routine. You know, if, if, if God isn't part of your routine, then all you're doing is kind of squeezing them into the time that you have, the extra time, you know? Like, we need to make the Lord part of our, part of our routine. Um, another one on here is work. That kind of ties in with the money one. I mean, we get so that it's easy to forget about the Lord, but I also put it's important to 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 the Lord. That way, you're including the Lord when you're not, you know, when you're at work. Work as if you're working for God. And that's always how I've kind of. That's what I tell myself when I go to work. You know, even though like it's I work in a tough area, and um, you know, I've had to kind of humble myself. But I just tell myself that I come here and I work unto the Lord. Bless me for it, you know. Um, another thing that distracts us is hobbies, our hobbies, and that could just be, you know, I don't know. I didn't really put too much for it because it's kind of self-explanatory. Oh shoot, my ringer's on. I want that to go off. Um, here's this is kind of a this is an important one. Desiring a blessing from God more than God Himself. Self um, praying and asking God for certain things instead of just talking to Him. You know, God, oh, give me this. God, please bless her home. Blah, you know, blah, 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 blah. Instead of just talking to Him. You know, it's kind of like calling somebody up only when you want something from them or want help. It's the same exact thing. Um, and this is something we actually spoke about a few weeks ago during. Uh, I think Brother Barry brought it up. Um, we become too dependent on our pastor. Um, it's not pastor's responsibility to feed us all the time, you know. Um, you know, most most people only give God their time on Sunday morning, so you, you're only filling yourself up once a week. You know, you just Thursday and Sunday. Most a lot of us. I mean, pastor talks about it. Half the church doesn't show up on Thursdays, so you're only really feeding a week. You know, and the rest of the week, you're just going hungry. And you're probably just eating junk food, you know, dur- during the week. Right? You're just filling yourself with junk. I was going to say the C word, but crap. But, you know, I didn't want to say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The last reason is ourselves. You know, one of the biggest distractions from, from us and the Lord is ourselves. I'm just going to, hopefully my Bible communicate, uh, cooperates today. We have input. Um, that list is great. It's right on. I remember, I, I can hear all the comments from everybody. Every time you said something, somebody would speak up. Oh, yeah, there's one that somebody is dealing with. I that maybe not all of us are dealing with all of them, but I guarantee all of us are dealing with some of them. Yeah. Right. Guarantee it. So we can all in their distractions, but all of us have our own distractions that we have to overcome. Oh, yeah, I'm guilty and of we have probably to, half these things. Oh, absolutely. And we, <laughs> absolutely. You know, we, we can look at every single one of them and somebody with it, but I guarantee all of us are dealing with at least some of those issues right there that we have to overcome on a weekly, daily basis, and we have to remind ourselves all the time that our own relationship with God is what's most important, not showing up at church isn't important. What I'm saying is looking at everybody else and their issues is not going to fix your own issues. It's not God from what you're dealing with, and that's, you know, the classic thing, if you point one finger at somebody else, you got four coming back at you. But it does apply. And we got to remind ourselves is that whole list are excuses. That's all they are. They're not justifications. They're plain excuses that we use to justify what we feel like doing. Ourselves all the time what's really important and what's not important. Just like you said, the game's going to be over in three hours. But God's always going to be here. So what's more important? Uh, we, we do it with. My friend, we do it with. Uh, Thanksgiving, we're, well, our, our minds are on that turkey that we're cooking instead of church. You know, we don't want that meal to burn, but, you know, because we can't go buy another turkey. 
by, by all means. If that meal burns, anything. But we take our complete focus on what's going on in the service because we're worried about all the people that are coming over. And we think, it, like I said, distractions. Yep, so so we've got to remember each and every one of us has excuse or distraction if we allow it to be. <clears throat> all right, cool. So that's the end of uh, verse 1. <laughs> Moving right along. Let me just find where I started verse 2. Ed, can I just say a little something? Sure. Um, I, I agree with the um, keeping God first. I have to, I have to um, put visors on. I have to make put God first, and I still <laughs> don't do it all the time. I find that when I do... I'll be able to hear him better. I'll be able to love my husband better. I'll be able to hear what God's doing in my own heart or um, how to give of him. send me to somebody else, whether it be in church or someplace else. keeps my focus. Um, and it, it sounds so... I don't know, when, when, you, when you're first a Christian and you hear, you know, God and keep me first above everything, there's, your flesh kicks up and you're like, I mean. But in the simplicity of it all, as hard as it is to do, it's simple too, because when you yield yourself to that, your life becomes easier. Mm -hmm. With has God's hand on it. And, and that flows into the whole rest of, of your world, wherever it might take you. And it affects the people around you. They see the changes that it makes in you because it changes your thoughts and it changes your heart. Like pastors, pastors said it a few times, that we need to be like that horse and keep your blinders on. Yeah. You know, don't get caught up with what's going on on the side of you. Just always, always look forward. Great. Anybody else have something before we start the second one? No? All right. 18.2. <laughs> A fool have, hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. Um, I mean, that's it's pretty basic and straightforward. I mean, half the people, I mean, most people in the world are out there trying to discover their heart, you know? I mean, just that's, that's, that's being self what, what is going to make me happy, you know? Um, so I'm just going to read off. So fools don't care about learning to gain knowledge or understanding. All they do is talk about things that they know little about. A fool lacks common sense and never learns by their own mistakes. Mm, look at all the writing. This is why the same mistake over and over and over again. Um, we're supposed to learn from other people's mistakes. Just think about it. When we were, when we were younger, how many times did our parents warn us not to do something, but yet we needed to find out for ourselves that you know, why they told us not to do it, you know, and that's, that's what this world is. Um, I had a friend that his favorite saying was, don't confuse me with the facts. That's all it's on the Absolutely. Lack of facts. Right. Oh, my God. Yep. Lack of facts. It's true. True. Um, oh, let's see the last one train of thought. So we have the Bible, which is our life instruction manual, right? But yeah, we still make mistakes. It tells us what to do and what not to do. I mean, the perfect example right in the beginning of the Bible is what happened with Adam and Eve. God told them what not to do and what would happen. I guess they didn't believe him, and they wanted to find out for themselves. You know? um, do you have one? I do. I have um, a story, so to say, in talking about how wisdom is more than just having the facts the facts together, making sense of it, and with an outcome. Example, Friday, <clears throat> I was at work, and I had a call our vendor about a file that had not come in. And it had been two days, and it, had been, it should have been sufficient enough time, because we have two separate files for each of the monies that we receive. One is 
the explanation of benefit. The other is the actual electronic file where the computer does the work for us. So with that being said, I had to correspond back and forth with this individual. And I said, this is the case. Um, you know, we need your help. Then he writes back and says, well, you know, I talked to them and need to call them because you need to set this up because you don't have the service. And I'm like, how can that be? Because we've been here. And amazingly, this morning, that second file is there, the electronic file. He asked what I had to say about the facts. I got so frustrated. I went to my boss and I'm like, what do I do? To speak to a manager because he's not understanding the whole scope of his job. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, I had this huge pride, and I didn't know until I got on the phone, and God revealed it to me. Yeah, here you are. You think you know everything, and you don't know as much as you think you know. Because when I spoke to someone else, in an and they're like, oh, he probably saw that you just have this one file, because that's what everybody gets. But you have types of files. And I'm like, huh, okay. I'm assuming, making the assumption, Everyone has everything like us. Assuming that we're not the exception to the rule, but part of the general basis. So anyway, going further, I was able to individual, and she's like, you know what? I'm not going to take care of this, but I'll assist him, and I'll explain to him what he did wrong, and him to do how to do it right. So out of that whole thing, what God had to show me is, one, don't assume is all the same across the board. Two, don't assume that people are going to know what they need to know. And three, humble yourself enough to be able to say, well, help me to understand because I'm not getting it. Because you're assuming you know something, you know everything. Don't take that attitude. And I was just, I was so humbled, the fact that God had to show me like a fool because it got me to the point where I was in a tizzy. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe them. What is wrong with them? Like, That's your pride. Shut up, sit down, and stop acting like a fool. So I just want to in all forms, and it's just like <clears throat> the fact that you may have the facts in front of you, but if you don't know how to string them together and, story, and not make exemptions that you have all the facts, that's a huge difference. And that in life in general, not just in work. Yep. There's only one group of people that that's teenagers. I have this version and it says a foolish man hath no pleasure in good sense. To let what is in his heart come to light. I mean, really? Mm -hmm. A fool, what, what is a fool? A fool is a person who says no to God. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you say no to God, you can't have good sense. And everything that's in your heart, if you get, if you get around a person enough, you're going to know what's in their heart because it's going to come out. And a yeah. foolish man, surely he's not going to have wisdom. You know, that, to me, <clears throat> I thought that was good. There's no pleasure. I'm right here, Ed. I see you. Just to kind of like um, back up what Helen said. I just went through this, all this stuff last night by myself, and it's embarrassing when he shows you stuff that you don't even think you're wrong with. <laughs> and he reveals it to you, and, you're, and I was just livid. I was so angry at everybody else, but... um. And then he showed me, and I had to quiet myself down, and and I says, "Oh my God, I'm so sorry," because I, I thought I knew what I knew that I knew, and I was told I was so wrong, assuming that I knew that I thought I knew what I was talking about, and then I was told that this and that and the other thing, and I, <laughs> I had to apologize because I was just totally wrong. I guess it was pride and arrogance and everything else, and it, and it does humble you really bad. And it, you know, it makes you feel bad, but uh, 
I won't go into anything else, but uh, it was just very humbling to admit, see things that you didn't see, and then the Lord's showing you things, and he's saying, you think you know everything. So I was well put in my place, but I also let them know stuff that was going on because they didn't know, and they were assuming things themselves. So it was a learning experience and a humbling experience. So I'm just thankful I went through it, and it was hard. Um, I'm just going to read a scripture. It's out of 2 Timothy um, 4, and it's uh, verse 3. Uh, For the time will come when they will not endure sound. Well, that time is now, huh? <laughs> but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Like, how true is that, right? <clears throat> um, let's see. I kind of just have in my note give an example about, I'm not really sure why I wrote it, but maybe we'll, we'll click back in. Uh, give an example about going to church, trying to obtain wisdom and understanding. I mean, if a fool walks in, into church, they're not paying attention to what's going on. It's not soaking into their hearts what's being said. They have their on the football game after church. What's for dinner? You know, when am I going to do this? When am I going to do that? You know? Um, uh, they don't have any delight. They don't delight in it, and they don't have any understanding of why we do it. Like, you ever have anybody ask you, like, and then you kind of tell them, and they're like, "What?" <laughs> like, what? You, you, <laughs> you, and it's like, like you go to church from whatever nine a.m. nine a.m. to to three p.m. or whatever. Like, they don't get it because they're they're foolish, you know. I mean, not that they're well, they are foolish, but hearts don't understand why we do it, you know. Um, I just want to read a, um, 17 through 19 here. Uh, Jeremiah 17. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 17, 9. Uh, let's see. So the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Yeah. Right? The only thing that we can trust is the Word of God. Um, had for, for verse 2, so if anybody has anything to add, speak now or forever hold your, uh, your words. We're, we're going to pick up the pace a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, if this Bible is written to those of the same spirit, and God is talking to us when he's talking about being fools. And I don't think just somebody who says, as far as the salvation is a fool, or those out in the world are a fool. But I think we all... Oh, yeah, no, yeah, definitely. We all say no. Yeah. And yeah. maybe not in everything. No to God. And he's... <laughs> I think he's really talking to us about this in these chapters. As many times as this is brought up, how many decisions do we make without the Lord that make us a fool? Because if we listen to him and we did what he said, regardless of us knowing what or not, or whether or not we decide we're going to agree with him, if we just do what he said, he says it, without even understanding and completely trusting him, we will not do foolish things. Well, I guarantee you, we say no a lot more than we say yes. Okay, I just this of something. I think Sister Carol's twin. <clears throat> I know, that's... I pray for you. <laughs> that's... <laughs> Two of the same. In you? I don't know who to pray for. Two of the same in this place is going to be dangerous, but I know, Sister Carol, I know exactly what you're saying. The Lord gave me scripture to, to read. You sure it's the Lord? Yes. It's my Lord. He wasn't talking. All scripture. 
by inspiration of God. Now listen to this. All scripture, because something, there's not a fool out there in a bar or watching a game that's going to pick this Bible up and say, oh, a fool hath no delight in understanding. That sounds like... That's not going to happen. Sorry, Brian, I'm not trying to sound like, like Brian Regan, but... but for us. Now, it could also be that, let me finish this scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, furnished unto all good works. Now, I know some of this scripture is to make us aware of what's going on to people and their characters and stuff, but I think my biggest concern should be me. This, let's see, do I fit anywhere in there? And I think, Travis, that any of the points that were given could relate to any, any one of us at any given time. Not all. If they all relate, then we have a problem, you know. But even if there's just some, it's funny. Then I'll pass the mic back to Bud because I don't want to get carried away here. I was in the shower this morning. I'm thinking, I think I could write a book. And the title of the book would be Silver and Gold Have I None. Well, I'm working on my dishwasher today, so you're out of luck. We get caught up in our own things. Yes. True. Very true. Very true. All right, moving on. So Proverbs 3, when the wicked contempt comes also, and with dishonor comes reproach. Um, it was a little bit more challenging to uh, dissect, I guess. But um, the word contempt means to, of being disobedient or disrespectful. Um, when a person comes around who has no morals or shame, so come his contempt for wisdom. They hold nothing of God. I mean, that, honestly, that used to be me. That was me before, before the Lord opened up my eyes, you know? I mean, I was God, church, anything, you know? It was just nothing to do with it. Didn't hold anything sacred. My parents church. Sorry, Mom. I would, uh, I would act like I was going to church, go hop in the car, take a ride for a good hour. Yeah, church was great today, Mom. You know, it was awesome. You know? Good thing she never asked what we talked about. The Living Bible just cuts that verse right down to three words. Sin brings disgrace. Mm. It's true. Um, so it's saying that we need to separate ourselves, which I guess is true. You, you wouldn't want to hang out with somebody that doesn't believe. But it also... I dug a little bit deeper. It says that you should give them a, a chance, though, one or two chances, and then separate yourself from them if they don't change their ways. You know? Um, I'm going to go to uh, Titus 3. Um, so, Titus 3, 11, I'm going to read. And that says, reject a divisive man after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a and sinning being self-condemned. So right there, it's saying they reject them after the first or second, second chance. Um, but it just because you reject them doesn't mean you're not praying for them. Right. It, just, it comes to the point where you've got to say, you know what, God? It's, it's in your hands because there's not really anything else you can do. Um, I also want to go to Proverbs 22.10. And that says, Cast out the scover, and contention will leave. Your approach will cease. Um... So I told you I was going to start going quick. Does anybody have anything else, anything they want to add to that? <laughs> no? You, you know, I, I just want to say this. I, I'm, I'm watching what you're going through. 
and, and everything you read here, all we need to do is read Psalm 1. It, it cuts through the fat of the whole thing. You, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. What if you walk with the ungodly? He only said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. All you need to do is read the whole chapter. He'll tell you, it'll tell you exactly. And God doesn't change that word. That's his word. That's, that's not some in, that's not some doctrine in some church. That's God's word. The Bible says in the th that he'll sit in the heavens and laugh at you when you say no. Do you have ever had anybody laugh in your face? Well, guess what? God laugh in your face because he's going to have his way with you. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Listen, oh, I'm sorry, I had another scripture to go with. Uh, um, and it's in Deuteron Deuteronomy 28. 36 and 37 and um, it says the Lord will bring you and the king whom you set over you to a nation which you nor your fathers have known and there you shall serve other gods wood and stone and you shall become an astonishment a proverb a byword among all nations where the Lord will drive you I mean if that's not like a, a scary warning I don't know what it is you know alright looks like we're going to Proverbs 4 Told you, Chris, you're coming up soon. Uh, so Proverbs 4. Let's get there here. The words, of a, the words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. Uh, deep waters flowing out of your mouth, you are producing life, right? When your words are deep waters, you are speaking the word of God. Um... All wisdom comes from God. The wise man's words are deep. They have meaning and make an impact when you They make a positive, I mean, well, I should have put positive impact when you speak, because when a wise man speaks, usually it makes a positive impact on your life. Um, his words will comfort in time of need. When you have wisdom, you have authority coming out of your mouth. I want to go to pastor. I think sometimes in the English Bible we, we, we have some problems because multiple words in the Hebrew that, that give us what a man is. And I, I'm not going to do a teaching on, on the words. But the word here, right, ish. This is an ish man. Better, better translated ish could be champion. A, a, a leader, a ruler, one who is the higher positions because of right character. He's an ish man. Um, I wanted to turn to uh, Matthew 7. You don't have to turn there if you don't want to. Uh, it's 28 through 29. And so it was when Jesus had things that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So when you have deep waters flowing out, out of you, you're speaking with authority. You're speaking things into being. Um, I mean, Jesus was able to shut his enemies' mouths at will without any thought. I mean, it just, it just flew out of him. You know, it just came. It just came flowing out of him like rushing waters. Um, scripture. Um, so Proverbs, I'm going to go to Proverbs 17, 27. He who, has, who, he who has knowledge spares his words, and a man of understanding is a calm spirit. Hmm. Restrains his words, has knowledge, and he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. 
so it kind of goes back to the, the first two years we were on. You know, you got to have that understanding and that wisdom for, for your words to, to, to be deep waters. Um, I mean, look at how cheap talk is these days, you know? It means nothing. So we need to have wisdom with the words we speak. Um, it could mean life or death. I mean, you could kill somebody with what you're saying to them. Not just, not physically, but spiritually. I mean, you could definitely kill somebody with what you say to them. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm not big on, you guys all know me, I'm kind of quiet usually. I speak, I don't speak too often. But uh, I, I do that because I, I know that it's not how many words you say, it's just what you say. Yeah. You know, it's not, you know, you could, I just know from just before I got saved, like, people kept bashing, you know, go, oh, you got to go to church, you got to go to church, and they kept saying all this stuff. It's like, that's not going to bring somebody to the Lord, you know? <clears throat> um. the, the Living Bible on verse 4 says, A wise man's words deep streams of thoughts. Convey an image. And when you look at running water, water, you only see the surface. But you don't see what's halfway down or way down. Mm -hmm. It talks about Deep streams of thought, several streams of thought in one place. So sometimes it just requires time to think about what somebody said because there's levels that, that yep. can be used. It's Big true. Big fish are in the deep waters, right? Buddy? Big <laughs> fish are in the deep waters. That's why I never catch them. <laughs> um, so I got a couple of scriptures real quick that tie into to this whole thing. Proverbs ten eleven says he who who wins causes trouble, but a prating fool will fall. Um, the mouth of, I'm sorry, I went, that was the wrong one. Okay, the mouth of the righteous is a well of life. I mean, how is a well? You know, it goes down, I don't have a well in my, in my backyard, but I know you do, right? I mean, how far down is it? Mine's shallow. Ryan's got the 600 footer. Right, that's pretty deep, you know? Some deep stuff right there. <laughs> is somebody going to... Okay. Huh? Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for the time. <laughs> I'm to jump to Proverbs 10, 21. Um, the lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. I mean, how true is that? The word saying right now and the topic that you're talking about is extremely, extremely deep in and of itself. That is one of the biggest cruxes of the matter for all of us as believers. What you're, what you're going into right now, if we could really understand that, that is part of the end goal in our lives as individuals. To hear God. Because the words of wisdom and the words of life that you're talking about, they do not us. They can't. We can all sit there and have a conversation with somebody or a friend or somebody you're ministering to. Two hours of conversation. And you can give them surface, shallow advice that they walk off and seem like, wow, that was, man, that, that was helpful. And you'll see the fruit or you won't see the fruit. And that's the biggest difference. What you're talking about comes from being with the Lord. Jesus walk into a room of people and not say a word. Watch, observe, see what's happening. Observe, but he sensed this. And then be able to speak even in the midst of an entire multitude of people and then diffuse an entire situation in a few words, that takes a tremendous amount of time and processing in our lives. That's why I'm saying the weight of what you're saying is very, very important. It can take a lifetime, or maybe it doesn't have got we listen and obey. But all I can say is what you're saying is really, really important because the, coming to church does not get the job done there. It's with the Lord. Here gathered, alone, gathered with him, Time gathered with the fellowship of God here, being gathered with the counsel of the godly, if you want to take what Pastor said before. That's what's in that. And little by little, we have to be able to speak and declare what he's saying. That will reproduce fruit in other people. That's where the life is going to come from. Otherwise, 
shallow advice is not going to get the job done. Well, that's why I spent so much time on the first, on the first uh, verse of this, of this proverb. Because without that first verse, the rest of the, the chapter is nothing. Without having that wisdom and spending that time with the Lord, you're not going to have deep water, you know, deep waters flowing out of you. You're going to have a deceitful heart. So it all, it all ties into that first verse, and that's really why I wanted to spend all that time on it last week. That's why I'm kind of flying through the rest of it. But um, I'm just going to end with this. On, uh, is, uh, there's much below the surface of people's words. We understand the immediate meaning, but cannot always discern what we're thinking and feeling. Um, wisdom bubbles up from the depths of the wise person's heart, revealing itself and refreshing all who listen. Um, I mean, just one example, I guess, would be you ever send somebody and read it and be like, man, that's not even what I meant to say. Yeah. Yeah. It's, exactly, it's exactly what I'm talking about, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Proverbs, it says, the words of a, ma of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellsprings of wisdom brook. And it says here, there is a spring of spiritual wisdom and knowledge in him. A well of living water springing up onto everlasting life. And from thence it flows freely and constantly, communicating itself liberally unto others and ministering grace to the hearers for their edification. Just think about that. That's what those waters are. Springs of wisdom. This is what it does. And it's like Damien says. You have to get in that presence of God. You have that time there, so that this can flow in you and through you. Let me, if you don't spend time that wellspring, you can't be that wellspring, because you can't have anything inside of you that's going to flow out of you from him. He has to do that in you. Absolutely. I like it because it's liberal. And it, and it doesn't only free you, it frees everybody around you, because you can minister his life to them. Right. Yep. Um, I think I'm just going to stop there because the bell rang. But just, a, I guess, a quick thought. It's talking about what you're supposed to do. It's supposed to soothe the person. So what is coming out of you? Is it soothing or is it, is it somebody? You know, just something to think about. All right. Thank you.